In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. What Jesus came to do for an individual, we'll read about it in today's Gospel. What he came to do for him, he comes today to do for us. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are, we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those who heart, whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, Sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, Stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened and the speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. in a certain way, it's a laughing matter, but I thought the least that I could do was let him off the hook for preaching today. <laughs> this is a sort of a commonplace among us, I think, but I wanted to bring it up again, that the gospel is never only about something that happened a long time ago. It is always for us and about us who hear it. The story of the man who is deaf and unable to speak, it's about every person who is confronted with the good news of Jesus Christ. So it's about us. Another awareness that has taken me some time to come to is this. The eternal Son of God did not don our human flesh and life with the direct purpose of giving the power of hearing and speaking to this man in today's gospel, nor to restore the sight of the blind, one, blind ones, nor strengthened the legs of the paralyzed one, or even bring a little girl who has died back to life. He did not do that as his direct purpose in making our human flesh, in becoming one of us. These things he did to give people, including us in our time, clues to his identity. He needs us, hearers of the word in every generation, to use our senses and our minds to discover for ourselves who he is. On the morning of Holy Saturday each year, the church is ready for the celebration of the sacraments of initiation, baptism, 
confirmation and Holy Communion for the first time. But the church is not just the building. The people who have been preparing, there have been catechumens uh, or they've been baptized before. Uh, they're, they're called candidates for full communion. These people have been readying their own hearts and minds uh, for more than a year to, um, to be uh, received into the community of the church, into the sacramental life of the church. These aspiring Christians who have been preparing themselves for a good long time by listening to God's word and sharing their faith with one another and in a real way trying on sort of like a sweater or a coat trying on the Christian life as faithful Catholic people uh, live it. Their progress along the way um, to that moment on Holy Saturday is mar has been marked by signs made by the church's ministers. Among them, the signing on forehead, eyes, ears, mouth, shoulders, hands, feet, marking this person as dedicated to Christ. So on the morning of Holy Saturday, they come together for the final signing before baptism itself. They listen to the gospel that we just heard. And then after a few words to focus the attention of all presence on the meaning of the sign, they receive a touch on the ears, on the lips, as they hear with regard to themselves, Jesus' word to the deaf man in the passage, Ephatha, which means be opened. The meaning of that sign for them is the meaning of today's gospel for you and me. who are called to the life-saving conversion that Jesus offers. These are, not, these are not mere signs. They're signs of something that must happen within us. Be open. Let the word of God, let Jesus himself, who died to free us for life and was raised to life beyond death, let the word of God enter you and do the work for which God sent him. The passage from the letter of James today offers but one example of the kind of conversion that Jesus wants to bring. A certain level of economic success uh, means doors that are open to us, and wealth, well, wealth sometimes impresses us. And what also sometimes happens is that a certain level of economic disadvantage not only finds doors of opportunity closed to us in our if that's our situation, but may turn us into people like, like the warning of James in his letter describes. James means to point out that the worth of the human person before God is in the person herself or himself and not in any accidental, any accessory uh, something 
that we may see or hear. Jesus wants to help us to learn, we who belong to Jesus, how to see as Jesus himself sees. The true value and dignity belong to the person. The differences, skin color, earning capacity, charming good looks, those are not what give dignity and worth to a person before God. It's the person. It's in the humanness where the dignity and value reside. As I said, this is only one practical application of the lesson about the gospel and its message for us. Jesus wants to open us to himself, to what he has to say, open us to his life and death and resurrection so that we may be brought through death to life. Jesus' real intention is to draw us to faith in him and through him to faith in God our Father. Are there barriers between you and a personal encounter with Jesus risen from death? What can you see in your heart of hearts that makes you unwilling to hear what Jesus has to say? Or what stands in the way of your professing your faith openly? These are questions that the gospel poses for me, for me today. <clears throat>